Have you ever thought about doing a project that required a small touchscreen attached to an ESP32? If you said no, you're lying. So these are from Elcro, which by the way, I got back in August. My bad, it took a while. These are ESP32s with touchscreen LCDs. Everything's pre-wired up. They come in multiple sizes. They're somewhat affordable for what they offer. And this video took me a while because I had to teach myself how to use it. When I say multiple sizes, I mean 2.4, 2.8, 3.5, 4.3, 5, and 7 inches. Now for this review, I spent most of my time with a 2.4 inch because it was the one that worked with Home Assistant and ESP Home. I haven't given up on getting the bigger ones to work, it's just that this one was directly supported, so that's what I rolled with. With the bigger screens, it's all about the graphics driver, like the library package. But if I had a little bit more skill, I could use a more robust development platform like Arduino, for example. But instead, I used ESP Home exclusively because that's what I knew the most of. As an example, here's the three and a half inch that I could not get to work. But, you know, the screen lit up. Anyway, speaking of examples, every screen does come preloaded with a demo program that actually allows you to see the different pages, the text, and the images. And you can download demo projects online to help get you started, which really makes it kind of a great thing to just be able to open up and play around with and maybe teach yourself something you didn't know. Powered by an ESP32, the WROM32 has a dual core processor with Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth 5.0. To supply power, you only need to plug in a USB-C or you can use the port on the side and it's just the normal ESP32 five volt requirement. But hey, let's talk about the screen, which again, all my experience is on that 2.4 inch so far. It's a TFT LCD with a resistive touchscreen. However, the bigger models, the fives and the seven inches have a capacitive touchscreen. And the smallest screen that they have is a 240 by 320 resolution, but they do go up to 480 by 800 in the bigger versions. Now this 2.4 inch only has a color depth of 262K, but if you get the 4.3 inch or bigger, you get a 16 million color depth. Now for the most part, all the devices have the same JST four pin connectors soldered onto the back. Some of the bigger ones do have an extra port because they have extra room, but they all use these four pin connectors that allows you to easily plug in all your fancy killer robot arms or miscellaneous sensors that you decide to play with. So it has multiple ways to exchange data, power it, and it even gives you a dedicated speaker out port. You also get a built-in storage option for a TF card, which is a trans flash card, which is basically a micro SD card that's trying to convince you it's different, yet it works exactly the same as a micro SD card and micro SD cards are completely compatible with the TF card slot, so you don't have to go buy anything special. And lastly, for convenience, you get your boot and reset buttons right here on the back. When it comes to development, I just don't have any experience in the other popular development environments like Arduino, Espress, Salua, RT, whatever. I mean, there's so many that this thing works with that I just, I've never used them in my life. But the 2.4 and the 2.8 inch is compatible with ESP Home right out of the box. Although I did go down some deep threads about compiling drivers for the larger screens, but for the sake of time, I didn't do that. Just kidding, I tried, totally didn't work. Anyways, like I said, it comes loaded with a demo that was actually built with that LVGL interface builder thing that it works with. Again, never used this before, but apparently this is a drag and drop UI designer. So, you know, one of these days I'm gonna try that out. I'm sure I missed a bunch of crucial details this thing has to offer, but I'm gonna move on to my very first project because I spent way more time than I'm willing to admit on it, a thermostat. Yeah, okay, hear me out. I'm well aware there's a thousand different options out there for this, but I got to make this. So it's cool for me. Like check this out, right at the start, obviously it's hard to miss my 100% custom Unreal Graphics 7 powered futuristic user interface. I know it's a lot to take in, so if you have to pause this video to regain control of your emotions, I understand. Okay, I'll stop, but in all seriousness, I went into this project with the goal of creating a thermostat to control my gas garage heaters. And I wanted to do this even before Ella Crow emailed me. I was planning on making an ESP32 powered thermostat, but now I have an ESP32 powered thermostat with a screen on it. But for me, it wasn't just having a thermostat. My main goal when I was making this program was to have the thermostat work on its own without any home assistant requirements, but still have a fluid interaction with Home Assistant and any automations I ended up wanting to deploy. So what does that mean? Well, that meant using ESP Home and configuring everything in YAML. I then set up some global variables to store some data like values for temperature or the mode that it was on. 
I then tied it into a BME 280 sensor, which is an I2C module that gives me temperature, humidity, and air pressure. And then to actually control the thermostat, because it's a simple two wire, all I needed was a relay, something that would connect two wires. So I created the three most basic modes on, off, and auto, set up a desired temperature value and some controls to raise it or lower it. And before you know it, 30 hours later, I have myself a thermostat. Now, like I said, this doesn't actually need Home Assistant. Like the automation built into this ESP32, once it's set to that mode, will handle everything itself. However, that does not mean I can't override it with Home Assistant. Although technically speaking, the way I override it is by telling the device to change modes or raising the temperature. A lot of this went into me just kind of figuring out how to make a thermostat, how to make things work seamlessly. Like what do I actually want it to do when? And I landed on just in case Home Assistant is not responding or anything, it doesn't matter. It will store those values. And as soon as it reconnects, if ever to Home Assistant, it will dump those values over to Home Assistant. So if I do need to change it and Home Assistant is not responding for some reason, I can do that. And whenever it comes online, Line, it'll get updated. The downside is that right now, if I change the temperature on Home Assistant and the device ain't responding, once it comes back online, the device is just going to be like, no, actually, this is the real temperature. But I much prefer having the control for setting the temperature that I want on the touch screen. And it will instantly send that value over to Home Assistant. If it's changing modes, it'll also send that over. But I can control everything from my phone using the ESP portion of Home Assistant. I'm not getting into automations or quick buttons or anything like that. It's just a matter of having the entity that you can control, in my case, helpers. I can use that to control this device. However it is I wanna set that up, I can use those to control it. But at the end of the day, the buttons on that screen will override it. For the layout, I did try to get a little fancy. I added some colors that change based off of whatever the heck it's doing. I mean, yeah, it's like three boxes and three different colors, but you know, I made those boxes. So I'm very proud of those boxes. Actually, the thing I'm most proud about is the Home Assistant logo. I know it's gonna sound dumb, but I didn't download that. I didn't import that. I drew that with little squares and lines and stuff like that. Like that's it. it that is drawn by computer hand. And then because I'm fancy like freaking Applebee's, I made the chimney light up red whenever the heat is on. Hell, I even put the little dots with lines in the middle and that changes colors. If like Home Assistant gets disconnected, not only will it say it got disconnected, but it will change the color of the house. Look, I'm not saying I'm great at anything, but this week, that's my achievement, okay? I built a house. Yeah, I'm a little proud of it, okay? Bask in all of its glory. I mean, after all, this thing was programmed to not need Home Assistant, but it is still really a Home Assistant device, like in my mind. I just don't wanna not be able to use my heaters if Home Assistant isn't responding for some reason. I would walk you through every single thing it does here, but I think it kind of explains itself. Desired temperature, actual temperature, humidity, I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious. I am gonna talk a little bit more just to show you a few different things, just to press a few buttons, just so you can bask in all the gloriness of my house. Hey, it took me a long time to figure all this out, but when I wasn't banging my head against the wall, I was having fun doing it, so that's all that matters. I will most likely post this script to GitHub because I know I have more things that I want to change and maybe add or remove. I'm not really sure yet, but I know there's things I want to change. Feel free to check that out if you end up getting one of these or you're doing a project similar to this. And if you do, maybe it's better, cooler, or amazing, let me know because I have other screens that I have to work with and I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with them just yet. Thermostat was kind of like my whole thing. All right, before I go, Elecro does offer acrylic cases for each device that fit pretty damn well, actually, and they look good but I have a new 3D printer from FlashForge and I wanna make a custom little mounting thing that has the screen and the sensor underneath it or to the side of it. I don't really know yet, but I wanna make that and I wanna 3D print it just because if I don't make something too complicated, I will do it too fast. So I haven't got to that yet, but trust me, just me getting here was like climbing a mountain. Of course, I will link all of these screens in the description down below. And I do wanna say thank you, Elecro, for sending these over to me. And again, I apologize for it taking like you know, six years to do it. I hit a speed bump, set them down, and then the seasons changed. And I remembered I had them. So hey, tips, tricks, or arguments, leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.